You know, it's exciting because um, we're going to take a break from the Timothy series today because narrow, uh, there are so many camps coming up and we want to talk about generations. Next week, Pastor Sam Pyong will cover um, the go back to the Timothy series to close it and then we will be done and it will be Christmas season. Wow, the year is ending. And so today, you know, I really want to... Um, Talk, because with all these next generation um, things happening, and the year is coming to an end. But more than that, next year is going to be a very critical year for SIBKL because it is transition year. We'll be celebrating our 30th anniversary. And in that celebration on the 7th of July next year, um, we are transiting senior pastor. Uh, and so it's going to be a really important um, or, or significant. Every year is important. And every year is significant, but it's a big transition. And um, with that, I thought it would be good today, as we talk about generations, to bring us back to how we started 30 years ago, how the next generation ministry started. You know, we, um, SIBKL started in 1994 in 1994, and I have a picture of our children's church in 1995. Um, this group of kids here is all the children we had in this church. It's the total children ministry that we had, seven of them. Um, now some of them have gone on to be big CEOs and chief um, strategy officers and whatnot in big companies, but those were our early days. We would met in a shop lot in Damansara uptown, um, up on the level two. That is our humble beginnings. Um, and you know, at, at, at time, um, but after that, in this picture also, actually, let me move away. We went, this second picture that we have is um, in 2008, and that is when we moved into CP Tower. That picture is actually the first Christmas celebration that we had in CP Tower for the children ministry. And as you can see, CP Tower is actually just the building next door. So after Damansara Uptown, we moved to the building next door, just in front of Eastin Hotel as you were coming in. That on the fourth floor, that's where we met. We had the old wing, then we moved into the new wing as well. We took both sides. And that is the first Christmas um, celebration that we had, big day for the children ministry. As you can see, the kids were growing at that time in CP Tower. But you know, this brings me back to the early days of SIBKL. We were actually, we started the church small. You know, I, I, I joined the church since 1996. Um, yeah, in 1996. I joined SIBKL in 1996 when we were all college students. And I thought I'd give you a picture of us then. Yeah, we were, about 80% of the church was youth, really. Um, and this was the youth that was there. You can see some familiar faces. Can you see Pastor Li Chu? So chante there, striped. You see Pastor Li Chu? Wow, sunglasses. Wow. I'm in there also. Can y'all find me? Confirm cannot. I'm here, up here. Can see or not? Now, up here. Cannot see la, this pointer. This pointer is, cannot make it. But yeah, I'm up there. Um, next to Chris Chu, Pastor Li and Pastor Chu's uh, son, and of course, you know you can you can see Daniel Tan there, Daniel Ko there, Ta, Tan Chak Lee, Kay Lee, um, some of all these people, you know, that's still around, and, and you can see different faces um, that's on this. So some of you might find other familiar faces there too. You know, the van behind this um, is the van that we used to shuttle all these kids, um, all these students to the church. Then after that, we shuttle them back. On Friday is the van that we will use to shuttle everyone to um, go for sale and whatnot. It's, we were much smaller then, and that's why in those early days, right, we did a lot more crazy things. Um, we would all do surprise birthdays for almost everybody because a lot smaller. And so one year, right, in 2002 to be specific, we decided since we have surprised all the youths, we are going to surprise Pastor Chu on his birthday. So, on his birthday, right? Please don't do that 
now, you know, he might call the police on you. But on his birthday, all of us sneaked up to his house, all drive there, everyone. I remember, shh, quiet, quiet, quiet. And at 12 o'clock, we ding dong. Pastor Yishu is thinking, who in the world rings the bell at 12 midnight? He came out like, what's that, what's that? And we're all surprised, happy birthday. And this is the picture to show you what we did then. <laughs> And you see a lot more familiar faces. I see Emilia sitting there. You see Emilia um, up there. You see a lot more Wan Yan who's still on the worship team, Chai Ling, Chuck Lee. You see a lot more familiar faces in this picture. You know, um, those were good times. The church continued growing with the young people um, in the church. And, but then it didn't stay there. We moved on. We moved on and we moved to this building that we are meeting in, in 2006. We moved to Bangunan in 2006. And here, there is a picture for you um, of the early times in Bangunan Yin when we had our children ministry. This girl, Twinkle, is actually one of our singers. You will see her. She, she doesn't look like that anymore, so you might not recognize her. Um, yeah, she, she actually sings. But this little girl here is actually Shani. She was four years old in that picture, but today she's 20 years old. She just turned 20. And next week in our children's rally, you will be seeing her right on this stage, worship leading. Come on. So good. I do one more, okay? One more. Um, and then I'll move into my sermon. This picture is Jem. In 2008, um, we had a pre-teen scam. So we brought all those kids, 10 years old to 12 years old, to Port Dixon for a camp. You see this guy in red, that's Pastor Michael Lamb. He is our, one of our lead pastors for Life Gen Church right now. This guy in front here is Ronnie Shim. He, he, yes, that's Ronnie Shim, and you know, he helps out in the production of the church, the musicals, and whatnot. But this guy, 85, this cute little boy is who I want to highlight. So cute. Does he look familiar? <laughs> that is our very own Pastor Sean Quack at 11 years old. <laughs> Actually, Sean, how old did you join SIBKL? Uh, 2001. 2001, he joined. Four years old. He was four years old when he joined um, SIBKL. He's 26 years old right now. But I want to highlight this camp to you guys. You know, because I was looking at old pictures, so um, yeah, I was sharing this picture. Wow, John, look at yourself. And he told me, do you know this camp is the camp that changed his life? I was like, wow, serious. Tell me more. Um, this is the cross. The camp is called the cross. What happened is, during the whole camp, we got kids to actually carry a physical cross. So you can see the picture. There was a physical cross that they had to carry for everything they did. When they makan meals, they have to carry their cross. They go for session, they have to carry their cross. They go play games, ah. Voila, we have to bring the cross and all that. So it wasn't easy, but they had to bring the cross everywhere. And Pastor Sean was sharing with me, you know, on that last night, Ronnie Shim was the uh, guy that was facilitating his group. And Ronnie challenged Sean, saying, Sean, or the whole group, kids, are you going to take up your cross and follow Jesus? And Sean was telling me it was so real for him that time because they just went through all this activity where they had to carry this cross. It's not an easy task to carry your cross everywhere. But do you know what happened actually in this camp? When they have the activities, right, there will be disturbance, people that will come, right, and actually come and so they are just cross off one, you know. Or when they want to do shortcuts, when they play games, they want a shortcut or whatever, then your cross also can be sought off. Then lighter, I like, can carry it, you know, and all the easier, easier to move. But the thing is, at the end of that activity, that few days, right, they had to put the cross over this gap. And if your cross was not long enough, you will not make it to the finish line. 
It was so real for them because he saw some of his friends not making it because either along the way, they've decided to take shortcut. That faith, our faith, our Christian journey is too hard. Take shortcut. Lah. Or they have done things and allowed the enemy to come in to cut off their cross and they didn't make it. So it was so real for them. But that day, Sean Craig, in that 11-year-old, cute condition, decided he's going to take up his cross and follow Jesus. Amen. Today, at 26 years old, he is our youth pastor. Wow. And now, he is challenging our youths to carry their cross and follow Jesus. Maybe not in those exact words, but to live their lives for Jesus. Come on, let's give a big hand to Pastor Sean. And that is what I want to share about today. Generations to generations. There is an ongoing work. You know, generations is one of the big rocks that we have in SID KL. And as, you know, um, we look at generations to generations, I want to just share Psalms 145 with you because that will be my anchor passage today. Let's read this passage together. Just two verses. Um, let's read this together. Ready? One, two, three. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. I have news for you. Everyone is called to influence the next generation. Everyone, not some, not those that are in children ministry, I, uh, those teachers, they are called, uh, or those youth leaders, they are good, they are young people, or are your families with young families, or even, you know, some people connect very well with young people. Those people are called. No, in this verse, it clearly says one generation will commend God's work to another. If you belong to a generation, you are called. If you belong to a generation, you are called. You know, the interesting thing in this passage is if you look at the NIV physical Bible, that's why it's good to still have physical Bible, you will see there is a cross-reference in verse 4. In verse 4, there is a cross-reference I <laughs> there, and it, it, it actually brings you to Deuteronomy 11. And Deuteronomy is 11 is this famous passage on the Shema. You know, it talks about the Shema, which is the very foundation of any Israelite or Jewish practice. Up to today, you know, a Jew will recite the Shema twice a day, in the morning and in the evening. It's a foundation of their faith. Could it be that commending God's work is the foundation of our lives. It is not a suggestion, but it's a foundation of what we need to do. And so in um, Deuteronomy, uh, sorry, Deuteronomy uh, 11, it actually says this, teach them, teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you're going to bed, when you're getting up. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on the gates so that as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may flourish in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Do you want to flourish in your land? Are you working very hard and feel sometimes you are still not flourishing? Could it be God has given us the recipe already? What we actually need to do is to commend God's work to the next generation. And not just you, you and your children will flourish. It clearly says, not I say, the Bible says, you and your children will flourish in the land God has given you. 
And so this is really powerful. This is powerful. Sowing into the next generation is for everyone. Sowing to the next generation is for everyone. So everyone say aloud. Say, I am called to influence the next generation. Okay, you guys are not convinced. I want you to speak to yourself, okay? You need to convince yourself. Say, I am called to influence the next generation. I am called to influence the next generation. Not to lecture them, not to tell them um, what they should do, should not do. I mean, you can do that, but in this context, it's not to lecture them, not to tell them what you should, or tell them, you know, I know more. Hello, I've eaten more salt than you have eaten rice. Um, yes, you have eaten more salt than some people have eaten rice. Yes, but it's not to put that forth to them and how big you are, how small you are, it's not that. Because here, God gives us how we should do it. But before I go there, I just want to speak to young people. If there are young people here and if you feel you are young, you belong to young category, this is not an age thing. Sowing into the next generation is also for the young. So long as you belong to a generation, you are called. So long as you belong to a generation, you are called. So if you are YA, you can sow into the campus college people. College campus, you can sow into the teens. Teens, you can sow into the kids. Kids, you can sow into the toddlers. Toddlers, you can sow into a generation yang akan datang. They will come. And as the toddlers grow, there is a place for them to sow back. It is not an age thing. Every generation will commend God's work to the next. And this is exciting, exciting. Here, God gives us the recipe, the strategy to commend His work generations to generations. In Psalms 145, it goes on to say in verse 5 that they will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your works. They will tell of the power of your awesome work and I will proclaim your great deeds. So how do you commend God's work from generation to generation? Here it tells us, Speak, they will speak, and I will meditate. They will tell, and I will proclaim. So the two things that I'm going to share with you today. They speak, I meditate. They tell, I proclaim. What a wonderful picture. Basically, God has given us a way to relate to the next generation. In verse 5, it says, speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. What's the glorious splendor of your majesty? What is this glorious splendor? Basically, what the Bible is telling us is tell to the next generation the wonder of who God is. Why are you a Christian? Who is God to you? What do you believe Jesus to be? Why do you even believe in Jesus? And this is not asking you to tell, oh, God was this great thing for me, you know, in my teens. No, but God should be real for you every day. The next generation needs to hear, why is God real for you right now? Because if God is God, there has got to be constant, fresh revelation and fresh encounter on who He is. Actually, it's so easy to relate to the next generation. Just tell them about yourself. You know, no need long lectures, no need focus on what they are, what they are not, or what they need to do. Just tell them how real God is to you. They will buy it when they see that's what is real for you. They will buy it. Do you know the devil hates the next generation? The devil hates... Actually, it is not just an age thing because I think the devil hates every generation, okay? The devil hates every generation. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy every generation. But he especially goes for 
the young and the very young. And that's why you see more atrocities happening to children right now and increasingly more. You know, child abuse, child trafficking, child depression, children's mental health is such a big thing, you know, and it is getting more rampant than ever before. And that's why, you know, the devil is all out to get the next generation. You know, I, I was um, talking to my daughter's school teacher in her secondary school, and the school teacher was telling me that, do you know, the Form 1, 2, 3 kids are the most difficult kids to manage in this season of school life because they were all the kids that was in MCO. Remember, we had MCO lockdown. <laughs> yeah, we all went through that. But the kids went through it in a very different manner. They all just, because they didn't have that social interaction, they didn't have church life. They grew up in a different manner for that two, three years. And when they came out in schools, just generally all over, that age group is so difficult to manage. You know, the devil knows to go for kids. But when dark gets darker, God is raising a generation for himself that will stand, that will be passionate for Jesus, that will stand for what is right and righteous, that will be a counterculture for the world out there because God is raising an army. But do you know how that can happen, how this generation can rise up? This generation can rise up when you commend the works of God in their life. When you show them the reality of God in your life, how real God is to you, the wonder of who God is, they need to see it. You know, there's a research that is done by the Barna Group. In 2021, Barna Group did a research in the United States of 1,021 churched adults with children aged 5 to 14 at home. So this research was done to understand um, what it takes to disciple children towards resilient faith. Basically, what do we need to do today to create a lasting, lifelong faith in a child? So this research was done for that. Um, and you know, the following findings is the reported findings for this research. As a start, two in five children in children's ministry, so we're not even talking about the kids out there, they are children in children's ministry, have meaningful relationship with an adult. So a very low 39% of the children have a meaningful relationship with adults. And 61% do not have a meaningful relationship with adults. What is a meaningful relationship with adult? Basically, a child has a reg like has um, regular engagement with an adult in conversation. That's what a uh, meaningful relationship with adult means. Or when a child has faces a challenge or a question, they actually will have an adult that comes to their mind on who they can go to. That is um, the definition by them. And so, why? Does children who have meaningful um, relationship with adults matter? Why does this matter? Why is this uh, statistics important? Because in this um, research, it shows children who have meaningful relationship with an adult at church are more likely to be rooted in their faith, in Scripture. And here is the results that shows it. It's a little bit small and a bit a lot of things, but let me read this out to you. About 60% of children with meaningful adult relationship is able to integrate the bi biblical principles in their life, study the Bible on their own, understand crucial principles from the Bible, understand the big picture of the gospel in the Bible, and memorize scripture. And this is like only 60% of all those, the 39% who have meaningful relationship with adults is able to do that. When they don't have a meaningful relationship with adults, only 20% plus 
does that. You see the big gap in these statistics? The big difference, there is such a significant gap when they do not have an adult in their life. An adult being able to impart to a child makes a drastic difference to their faith. These kids are more likely to stay in church, to serve in church, to have friends in church. And so it's very important that they need not just children ministry. These are all kids in children ministry. But 61% don't even have a meaningful relationship with adults. So the left back 39%, uh, only this percentage, 60% of the 39, is able to engage in this manner. But now this is another statistics. So when a child has, uh, are in... When children are in healthy intergenerational um, Christian communities, they live out their faith and can stand for biblical principle. And here is more statistics to show you. And this is the last of the statistics I'll show you because this is important. Um, it's once again very small. But catch this. A child with meaningful adult relationship, 70% of them learn what it feels like to be part of a team in church make a lifelong commitment to Jesus. You see, those that don't have, only 20% of them make a lifelong decision to Jesus, you know. People in children ministry, your kids, if they don't have adult, meaningful adult relationship, whether it's with parents, with uncle, auntie, with koko, che che, it's make it makes a huge difference. They, children with meaningful adult relationship, they are inspired to live generously based on the example of others. They learn to be a Christian who engages culture with love. They contribute to the church. They better understand their purpose in life. And you wonder why is there so many people going out there not knowing the purpose in life? Here we have the answer. Meaningful relationship with adults. It, they help the church keep priorities that Jesus intended. They have an adult mentor other than pastors. And lastly, they learn how to use their gifts outside of church. Guys, this is important. It is so significant that our next generation needs to have a meaningful adult relationship because only 20, 30% of those without meaningful adult relationship is able to do all this. Do you see the importance, how important it is to commend God's work to the next generation? Having a meaningful adult relationship makes a significant difference to their faith, to the faith of the next generation. And that's why Barna goes on to say, strong networks of old and young Christians do not just happen by accident. It is an effort that we need to make. It does not happen just by accident. This is critical for the next generation. This is something that we need to show our children the wonder of who God is. Speak of the glorious splendor of God to the next generation. You know what happens when you speak of that glorious splendor to our kids, to our next generation, when you tell them who God is? Verse 5, right, it goes on to say, when you speak, the next generation will meditate on God's wonderful works. That's what verse 5 says. So, you know, I reckon the next generation, when they come into contact with the older generation, they hear their, wow, who God is to them and what God has done and why is God real? Why do you believe in Jesus and how convicted you are? You know what a younger, gen younger person will do? They'll step out of that conversation and they will start thinking, hmm, how come God can be like this to this Koko, Cheche, uncle, auntie, uh, my father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, whoever they are. Why can God be like this to them? Ah? You know, is God really real? Yes, I know I've been Christian, I go to church, but is God really real? But it's so real for this adult. You know, maybe God is real, and not just God real, maybe God is real for me too. Their secondhand faith 
now becomes a first-hand encounter because they will think, the next generation, when you share how real God is to you, they will reflect upon it. They will meditate on it. And they will think of how real this God is to them. So commend God's work. Generations to generations. You speak, they will meditate on it. So you, all you have to do is just speak. They will meditate on it. And the second part of this passage, it says, you tell and they will proclaim. What do you tell? It says, they tell of the power of your awesome works. What is the power of your awesome works? Tell the next generation your story. What has God worked in your life? How has God changed you to be who you are? What is your story? What is your God story? What are your fears? And how are you trying to still trust God in it? You know, you don't have to paint a perfect picture. The next generation do not need you to be perfect. They need you to be real because they are struggling through a lot of real things. They need you to be real. You just have to tell the next generation your story. You know, about two weeks ago, we have our regular um, dinner with my parents, my, my father and mother. We have our weekly makan together. And in that makan, because year end, we are planning to have a scuba diving trip with my kids to get their license to scuba dive so that we can go um, different places to scuba dive together. So we were talking about oh, how we're going to go Sabah to do this scuba diving trip. And so when we were talking about that, my mom. My mom suddenly uh, recounted, yeah, there was this time when I went to Sabah, right? I went to this shopping mall because dad was busy with something. She has to wait for my dad. So she went to this shopping mall. And when she was in this shopping mall, she was just walking around, bored, nothing to do. Suddenly, she saw this counter. Free gift. Wow, I tell you, my mom, right? Got see free gift. She comes alive. Like literally, any, anywhere, anything. Don't know what is it she will come alive. So she go free gift counter. Okay, what is this free gift? Oh, auntie, you go into this room, you have to count how many teddy bear is in this room. Wow, not very hard lah, teddy bear in this room. Okay, can. Um, let's do it. So I said, okay, um, but we have a new staff. Actually, auntie, you are alone, right? You don't mind? I have this, we have this new staff that follows you. The new staff was like just 18, 90 years old, and my mom is like 70 over, right? So she said, auntie, can you bring the together? Like, you all go into this room. So my mom, how hard can we? Sure, no problem, since she's alone anyway. Come, let's go together. So they went together into this room. The moment she opened the door, right, she stepped into the room. The music is... She went into a haunted house, but got free gifts, okay? Got free gifts, so never mind. She go in, persist with this stranger that she had. So she walk, walk, walk into the thing. Wow, scary. Go, oh, all the music. She, suddenly, hantu come out. Wah! Another, as she go on, another hantu come out. Ah! And this girl next to her. So my mom was actually very scared. I mean, because she didn't expect it to be a haunted house. But this girl, right, was behind her, holding on to her. She said she can literally feel the grip of the hand, right? And she's like, ah! ah! She's so much more scared than my mother. My mother feels she's scared also. I, uh, never mind, la, can, la, can. Um, so they walked on and walked on. And as they walked on, this girl was so scared that she started crying. She was like crying. And my mom also like, wow, but hantu, let's stop, la, let's stop, go out. But cannot. They don't have an exit. You must go back all the, through all the hantu once again, or you go through all the hantu in front. La. Both sides also hantu. So they, they've walked quite far away already. So, but... Wow, but she's crying and all that. Okay, never mind, let's walk on. They, then they stop at these stairs. There's these stairs, right, to go into the next section of Hantula. And in that, what? So they sit down. Wow, she's crying and all that. So my mom saw her and thought, like, told her, wow, she's very scared, right? Yeah, very scared. She's like, yeah, auntie, very scared. Like, and she's like, um, do you know, I know of a man that can take your fears away. And his name is Jesus. <laughs> Real story. In the middle of the hantu house, my mom asked the girl, would you like to say the sinner's prayer? Sinner's prayer, people. Say the sinner's prayer. 
received Jesus into her life in the middle of a hantu house. And after that, hey, still got hantu, have to walk out. They still walked out. My mom did say she seemed a little bit more calm, still very scared, but they walked out of the hantu house. No free gift. How many teddy bears? Who knows how to count? <laughs> but when my kids heard that, I tell you, they were laughing, almost crying, and you know, it was so hilarious for them. You just need to tell your stories of how God worked in you and the next generation, you will find that will have impacted them much more than all the lectures or the what you need to do and not do that you tell them. You just need to tell them your story. You, we all have stories of what God has done in our lives to tell the next generation. But do you know what will happen when we do this? When we tell them our stories? Do you know for my kids, the next time they go to a hantu house or they go past it even, guess what they'll think about? <laughs> Grandmother said the sinner's prayer to someone in a hantu house. You know, but the thing about kids, right, they tell other people's stories to their friends as well. If you've heard kids talk, they don't just tell about what, what they, you know, that time uh, my grandmother, uh, you know, even when they go to a hantu house, uh, they'll probably even be recounting, they'll be proclaiming God's mighty deeds, God's great deeds to the next generation. So, you know, it's so simple. You tell, they will proclaim they will tell their friends of, wow, this is what happened to that uncle, that auntie, that um, fa my father, my mother, my grandfather, my grandmother, that koko, that cheche. You know, they will tell. And, yeah, and we proclaim of, and my ladies, um, you know, this is not just for old people once again, young people. You tell to the next generation what God has done in your life as well. You need to have it in your heart to tell the next generation what it means to have God. And you know, this is, it says next generation, not five generations down. It doesn't need to be something that you're uncomfortable with. It's not like, wow, you talk to babies right now when you're 80 years old kind of a thing. No, it's just one generation down. It's the next one generation commend God's work to the next generation is what you are comfortable to do. People that you just feel, hey, this is someone younger that I can impart to. That is that the generation that all you have to do is just tell and they will proclaim. You know, at the start of um, my sharing today, I showed you the picture of how SIBKL started. Um, but now, the saga continues. You know, commending God's work from generation to generation. SIB has always been, like I said, generations has always been one of our big rocks. You know, that's why it's so apt that it's membership today, and we're talking about generations. Um, you are part of influencing the next generation. Everyone is called to influence the next generations. Children's Rally is coming up. Narrow Street Camp is coming up. Please pray for us. Please pray for us. That let's believe, not I know we prayed today, but go back this whole week. Let's believe God will do something mighty in our next generation. But not only that, I want to encourage all of you, go out and find opportunities to engage with someone and just tell of who God is to you. Share your stories to them and commend God's work every generation to commend God's work generation to generation. And that's what I have to share with you today. You speak, they will meditate. You tell, they will proclaim. I'm coming to an end right now. One more story, Bole. Just one more story. You know, this year, we had all these rallies that happened in Sarawak and of course, um, I, I was planning it and working it with the team. At the very start of that planning, um, 
I had my team that gathered together and Angeline Cheong, you know, she's usually one of our program managers, but she's uh, yeah, not here today. Um, but, you know, she, she's the second in command for all these rallies this year. And when we were working it through, she was telling me, Pastor Lindy, you know, I feel this is a season we need to impart. You know, we have done all these rallies so many years. It would be so good to impart it to the younger generation. So we have another group of leaders that is able to run these rallies, you know, that is really one of our legacies. I totally resonated with her. We went into Narrow Street, asked Pastor Sean, give us some people. And he gave us a list of people. We got all these younger people to shadow us. Shadow us. So in Malam Pentacosta, which is um, the event that we had in September, that's the picture, 30,000 people that came into the event. Um, all our main committee had teens or young 20s that was shadowing them and going with them. Our production head, you know, I shared the story about Pastor Sean, Ronnie, who facilitated his group that last night of, who challenged him, will you take up the cross? Ronnie, yep, that's Ronnie. He is the production head for all our rallies. Um, Ronnie is the production head for all our rallies. And his shadow is this young boy called Joseph, 19 years old. Um, he was here yesterday. And Joseph is our shadowing here. So the first night, you know, if you have heard um, nearer like September, that time we were sharing, wow, it was pouring cats and dogs. There was the mud. There was a lot of elements to contend with. And so first day, it was pouring like mad. Joseph didn't have a raincoat. So he went out, but young lah, young, you know, it's good to be young. So he still did everything. Wow, shadowed Ronnie, helped him and all that, but drenched, whole night, drenched, wet, very uncomfortable. Went back, second day came. What did he go? He went to get a raincoat and make sure he had it right. Wow, when he appeared at call time, he had his raincoat. All good to go. So they walked and they did his, their job and it started to rain. When it started to rain, Ronnie turned to Joseph, who feels quite good about himself because he's dry today. He said, Joseph, you see it's raining right now and there are kids in the congregation. I want you now to take out your jacket, go to a kid, and give it to a kid. Joseph looked at Ronnie. He didn't say it, but I think he was like thinking, seriously, I am dry today. But you know what Joseph did? He took out his jacket, his raincoat. He went to look for a kid, and he put it on a kid and said, you use it generations to generations. You know, God is doing an amazing work and sometimes all it takes is just for that older person to say, come along with me, let me speak this to you of what God is. Let me tell you that next generation will then go out, take out their raincoat and now give it to another kid. God is doing something mighty in our midst, in our hearts. Maybe the answer to why, how we need to flourish is we need to sow into the next generation. I just want to close with this Bible verse that encapsulates everything. In Psalm 78, it reads, We will not hide these truths from our children we will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about His power and His mighty wonders. For He issues His law to Jacob, He gave His instructions to Israel, He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children. Why? So that, so the next generation might know them, might know, know what is them the glorious wonders of God's mighty act. Even children not yet born, and they in turn will teach their own children. So each generation should set its hope anew on God, not forgetting His glorious miracles and obeying His commands. Wow. Generations to generations. I'm done. I feel God is here 
Can I just pray for all of us? Let's pray for all of us. Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, we just want to invite you into our hearts. Give us that desire to build into your kingdom purpose. Lord, you know, some of us uh, might not have that immediate next generation around us. But Lord, I pray that even today, you will open our eyes, open our hearts to what you are saying in this church. Lord, thank you for bringing every person here. Lord, you, you've always, even right at the beginning of SIBKL, you've sown this in our senior pastor's heart. This belief that every person, you bring the best into this church and that every person is here in this season for the building of this house for your kingdom purpose. And so Lord, I want to lift your, just lift you up in our midst right now. God, you are a God of generations. You be big. You continue to speak to us and you enable us to commend your work from generations to generations. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.